Welcome to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or who should be in the news. Now, this uh, program is more like a sequel or a continuation of the past uh, two programs that we've been having. The first one, if you recall, and I hope you were uh, able to watch that uh, uh, program, it's about uh, biological dentistry, where our guest speaker was Dr. Nelson Gaba. After Nelson Gaba, we talked about integrative medicine, and the title was Body Tooth Connection. And the uh, speakers were uh, Dr. Edna Lau and uh, Dr. Romel Tino. Now we put it all together, it all comes together. This is the, this is the epitome, this is the uh, uh, top of the pyramid when we get to talk about this topic. And uh, we have uh, with us now experts from the United States of America. One gentleman uh, comes from Arizona and the lady comes from Texas. And uh, they are both, uh, uh, they were recently the guest speakers on biological dentistry in the Philippine Dental Association annual conference. And we're going to be putting it all together. And uh, please listen very carefully. This could uh, save your lives, the lives of your loved ones as well as uh, give you a better quality of life. And uh, we have with us, uh, from my left, uh, Dr. Don Ewing. Doctor, welcome. And Dr. Michael Margolis. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. OK, so uh, the topic is biological dentistry, tooth-body connection. We start with bio biological dentistry. Very briefly, what is the definition of biological dentistry? Well, we stress the use of non-toxic restorative materials. We try to find hidden bone disease and toxins within the jawbone. We stress the impact of whatever we use, whatever procedures that we do, on the entire body of the patient and how they respond. Okay. And uh, tooth-body connection, Dr. Ewing. I mean, uh, I heard uh, your uh, talk yesterday at the SMX uh, Arena in uh, SMX uh, Convention Center. And uh, you were talking, one of the many, among the many topics you were discussing is how every tooth is connected to a certain body organ or function in, function in a body. Can you please elaborate a bit on that? Because we'll just put it all together, biological dentistry, tooth-body connection. I certainly can. Um, you have certain teeth that are related to different parts of your organs. For instance, your front teeth on the top and bottom are related to your kidney and your bladder, the genital urinary. In a man, that would be a prostate. In a woman, that would be a uterus. It's also related to the anal canal. Next to that are your liver and your gallbladder and your eye teeth. So when you hear about your eye tooth. And then on, on top, we're looking at lung and large intestine. On the lower molars, it's lung and large intestine. And then we have breast and thyroid and spleen and stomach that are related to the bicuspids on the bottom, and then our wisdom teeth that are the heart and small intestine. So you might have a problem with a, an organ like a thyroid that would cause pain in a tooth or cause that tooth mm -hmm. to not get enough energy and it might be more prone to decay than the tooth right next to it that's on another organ. Okay, so it works both ways. It does. You can start with the tooth decay that would affect an organ or an infection in the organ which could affect the tooth. It can. You can have a tooth right. that's so abscessed or so dysfunctional uh, that it's causing problem for the organ. It could or could not. I mean, it's... It can. It does. It, it can. It, it can go both ways. You can have a tooth that's root canaled and it's completely dead mm -hmm. and it disconnects the energy going to that organ right. that then causes dysfunction or problem in that organ. Now, a question. It will, it can, it, I mean, uh, what, is, what is it actually? It will happen or it could happen. It can happen okay. because you right. have disconnected part of the electricity right. in your body. So the way God makes our body is mm. we can compensate for things. Mm. So a lot of times you, you have eight different teeth on certain meridians. So if you think of it as a freeway and I cut down one of the mm. lanes of traffic, that's going to cause problem for the freeway. Okay. So it's the same thing in the body. Of those eight lanes, if I disconnect one, I'm likely going to cause a traffic jam. Okay. Sir, is this scientific? I believe it's very scientific. Okay. If you use acupuncture, the Chinese mm -hmm. civilization uses it just for surgery and mm -hmm. anesthesia. I have seen patients who have their upper molars root canaled 
and I look at their panoramic x-ray, and then I ask the women if they have breast problems on that side, if they have a root canal. Mm -hmm. My own personal story, I had a root canal in an upper tooth here, area tooth number three, and it was in a car accident. I was very healthy prior to that. Okay. After that, my throat went from 17 and a half inches to 24 inches. That is my thyroid. I was misdiagnosed with thyroid cancer, mm -hmm. and it was taken out and found out that it was totally healthy and became a diabetic as a result of that. And if you look at the tooth meridian charts, you'll see that the pancreas is also on that. So it weakened my pancreas and caused further disease. I see. Now, is this being taught now either in uh, the traditional schools of medicine or dentistry, colleges of dentistry? <coughs> Certainly not in traditional. It is not? No, it's not. Why not? Uh, that's a very good question. Mm -hmm. That's the question that I asked once I started right. to find this connection. It's certainly not anything that I was taught. Um, I started off in dentistry and then ended up in medicine, and neither of those places was this being taught. Um, a chiropractor recognizes that the body is connected. Mm -hmm. An acupuncturist certainly recognizes that the body is connected. But when you start getting into different parts of medicine and dentistry, we seem to stay very focused in our one little area. And we don't even talk or network with the other practitioners as if the dentist can only just look at this one area. And is this, is it, do you know of any, uh, in, any uh, uh, school of medicine or dentistry in the world where they teach what you're talking about? No, I do not. And the, the disappointing thing is that mm -hmm. we have become so specialized in our medicine and dentistry mm -hmm. that the people don't see the forest through the trees or see the teeth in the arch or the organs to the rest of their bodies. I do not know of many physicians, unless they're alternative physicians, that will even look in the patient's mouth mm -hmm. to see if there's anything wrong. Because gum disease, periodontal disease, is a key to the rest of your body. We see it in publications today. Mm -hmm. And even the American Dental Association Journal has a publication showing that the gums connect to the heart and the rest of the body. Okay, and uh, Jane, might I mention yes. that in Germany this is very popular, and so in in Europe, especially in Germany where this started, Dr. Vol is the one that put that connection together of the acupuncture meridians going through the teeth and the connection of the bodies. And uh, go, and well, one thing that is intriguing is that. Uh, if you're talking to traditional dentists, whether in the Philippines or, the, or in the United States, they would find what you're saying a bit strange or incredible? Very strange, until you yes. experience it for yourself. And, right. and, and that happened to be my own experience, was that I was working closely with a biological dentist, and you would see patients come in that had compromised immune systems, uh, whether it be that they had cancer of a particular organ or whether they had rheumatoid arthritis or they couldn't see out of an eye, they would have a particular area addressed and their problems would resolve. And that to me was nothing short of a miracle and I completely didn't understand it. But then I didn't know anything about meridians at that point in time. Okay, now question uh, Dr. Margolis. You know, if, well this is actually a statement. One of the things that I want to establish here from you is one, uh, well, two things that uh, biological dentistry advocates that uh, traditional dentists don't up to now. Everyone listening here now would probably have heard this for the first time or very know little about it. Is one, tooth fillings, mercury amalgam, you call it, is deadly, is toxic. Not too many people know that because right now you go to a dentist's office anywhere in Manila or in the Philippines and, uh, you know, you have a cavity, they'll probably fill it up with a mercury amalgam uh, uh, filling. Am I right? Yes. Okay, number two, if uh, the tooth is in bad shape, another thing they're going to say is get a root canal. So these are two things that uh, could actually uh, get you very sick or God forbid, dead. Am I right? I believe you are, yes. Okay, so these two things are common practices, not only in the Philippines, but also in your country, the United States. True. So in other words, uh, these two things, if you are listening right now, 
and uh, you have uh, mercury amalgam filling on your tooth and you've just had a root canal, there's a big chance that uh, there's a, there could be a life-threatening disease just waiting to happen. Am I right? I won't disagree with you. No. Okay. These are just things that I'm actually repeating after I heard it from Dr. Gaba, Dr. Tino, Dr. Lao, and both of you. Well, you, I, I really haven't, I didn't hear you talk, unfortunately. I missed uh, your talk yesterday at the SMX uh, Convention Center. But if you only learn two things now, that uh, mercury amalgam uh, fillings can kill you or can make you very sick. So don't get one. And you can undo it. We will talking about, we yes. can talk about undoing the procedure. And secondly, we've talked about this before, but let me emphasize again. One of the standard things that uh, a doctor would tell you, a dentist would tell you, of which uh, most people would shudder, is you need a root canal. Now, every now and then, as you get older, maybe you've had one when you were younger. And uh, what did you say is an to an average adult uh, in his 50s? How many root canals would they have had? They would probably have, according to the American Dental Association, 3.0 uh -huh. or 3.3 .3 root canals so, uh, to yes. people over the age of 60 to 90 years old. Right. So, you know, we sit there and say, well, you get sick, you get old, you're slowing down. Mm -hmm. How many dead organs do you want in your body? Right. Uh -huh. And each tooth is a dead organ because an organ has its own blood supply, lymphatic supply, mm -hmm. and nerve supply. Each tooth has its own blood supply, lymphatic supply, and nerve supply. You take that out, as Dr. Ewing was saying, you break the electrical current going through the mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. and what you do then is you start producing toxic material because the inside of the tooth is made of little tubes that are filled with amino acids or proteins. It doesn't get any food, it doesn't get any water, it doesn't get any oxygen anymore. Mm. That's gonna become necrotic and it's gonna ooze out of the tooth into the body causing toxins that will go according to the meridian to certain areas of the body. That's why I could look at an x-ray and tell people you may have, I'm not saying they do, mm -hmm. but you may have problems with this certain organ or this certain group of functions in your body. And it's amazing how close we get because I do that every day in my practice with patients. And we get good health histories and we try to tell them what the connection may be. Because you can't tell them if you take it out, they're gonna get better because they might be so sick already from it. Okay. And can, and can, uh, can, you, can you hold that mm -hmm. thought? Uh, we are talking about the tooth body connection, biological dentistry. We're talking about never ever get a root canal. That's not even an alternative. And do not get fillings of mercury amalgam. And uh, doctors Margolis and Dr. Ewing will discuss more about that when we come back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Open House with Jerry Cornell, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or should be in the news. Well, this, uh, the lady and the gentleman uh, with me, uh, you've been in the news, have you? I mean, yeah. uh, discussing uh, what, you, what we are talking about, biological dentistry, tooth body connection. They have been in the news and certainly uh, they will be in the news, in uh, world news very soon. And right now, if uh, I, can, I can see, uh, without a doubt, there are dentists and doctors listening to us right now who uh, unfortunately, we can't, they can't call in, <coughs> but uh, this time you listen. <laughs> this time, please listen. And uh, they, if there's anything uh, that you'd like to tell them, you can send me email and I will forward it to Dr. Smargolis and Ewing. Okay, now, uh, as I was saying, there are many things about biological dentistry. I mean, yesterday, uh, just one of the few things, just one thing, we, the, the, what we were discussing earlier, when Dr. Ewing was, uh, was uh, talking, I mean, uh, one of the things she said that, she said, do you have any idea why when you wake up in the morning, you know, your, your breath doesn't smell good? Do you know why? <laughs> do you know why? So when you wake up, you brush your teeth, right? Do you know why uh, your, your breath doesn't smell good? It's because your teeth uh, expels toxic material. That's the right. tooth itself, because the tooth itself is a living organism, a living organ, so, it expels just like other parts of your body, just like you sweat. And uh, so that's what happens to the teeth. That's why it doesn't smell good. So that's just one of those little things, trivia, before we get into the more serious stuff, like why 
is it dangerous to get mercury amalgam fillings? Now, in my own words, this Bersaloy are the ones who is a company that uh, makes the, makes the, the amalgams that uh, doctors use. Not only in the United States, all over the world. Okay, and when it says the use of amalgam is contraindicated, what does contraindicated mean? Should not be used or could Correct. be dangerous. It's a reason not to use not it. Not to use it, okay. Well, uh, okay, it says uh, when you mix two dissimilar metals, am I right? Yes. Correct. Two dissimilar metals, do not use it. And every time you use mercury, amalgam, you put together two metals. So more they, than two metals. More than two metals. So they themselves are saying don't use it in patients with severe renal deficiency, which means? Kidney problems. Kidney problems. Patients with allergies to amalgams, okay? You know about that. Retrograde or endodontic filling, what is that? What that is, is when you have a root canal that's failed, mm -hmm. you go to the tip of the tooth, you go through the gum and through the right. bone, and you fill it with a mercury filling, okay. so it's just below the brain. Uh, okay, as a filling material for cast crown, which is exactly what it's being used for. Right, underneath the crown that's going right. on, a buildup. Okay, in children six and under. Absolutely. Why would you want to use a known neurotoxin in a child's brain? But nowadays, do they do it? It's the standard of care. Standard. Standard po yan It's so, cheap. So, so if, you, uh, if you have a child, you know, uh, who is four, five, six, you bring him to a doctor, he has a cavity, or she has a cavity, they're going to stick mer a mercury amalgam filling in her mouth, which could be very dangerous to his or her health. And then to expectant mothers. Okay, so uh, it, it passes through the blood, the placental barrier, mm -hmm. and gets to that child. My son has mm -hmm. problems from heavy metals because I had high levels of heavy metals in me, and he took some of those heavy metals out of me into him while he was forming it. Okay, can you tell us now, Dr. Ewing, why is mercury amalgam fillings dangerous to one's health? Okay, first off, it's toxic for 100% of the population, not just 1% of the population, 100% of the so population. So everyone, regardless of everyone. race, color, or creed. Absolutely. Okay. So when you put a, an amalgam in somebody's mm -hmm. mouth, and then you measure the amount of mercury that's coming off of that filling on, on let's just say, an everyday basis. It might be really small, 0 0.06 micrograms per cubic liter, which is teeny tiny. The United States government says it can be up to 100. But if you take a toothbrush and you go over the top of it twice, and I don't know anyone who just brushes their teeth mm -hmm. once, twice, and that's it, it goes over 200. It goes that high when you simply drink something hot, even if it's hot water. It goes that high if you drink something cold, but it's acidic. So you've got orange juice and, and lemonade and iced tea. There's so many different things. What about chewing gum? This is 24-7, every day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you've got mercury coming off those fillings in small amounts. Okay. And there are some people that can't excrete that mercury. So it builds up in their body and becomes toxic. But you go to the dental office and they grind that filling. So if I told you it went from 0 0.06 to over 200 simply by a toothbrush going over there, imagine how high the amount of mercury vapor is going to be right. when a dentist puts a drill to that filling. Okay, it's going to be huge. Okay, question. Why is it still being used? It's inexpensive. That's the reason. Is, it is inexpensive. Even if it's toxic? It or, is, or do the dentists know it? I don't think that the word is truly out there. I think more dentists put in white fillings now because it's socially not acceptable to have something not pretty. And in the United States, mm -hmm. we're all about looking good. And so I think uh, you will find here, yes. more dentists that are doing, quote, mercury-free dentists. But please, anyone listening to this, there is a huge difference between a dentist that's mercury-free and one that's mercury-safe. Mercury safe means that they follow a protocol in order to take that filling out to protect you at the highest level of care. Excuse me, you're talking about undoing it, right? I am talking okay. about undoing it. So in other words, you're not, what you're saying is using it as a filling is, should not even be an option. Why would you want to have oh, okay. a known neurotoxin put in? Okay, now that it's in, you take it out. What, what you're saying is taking it out could also be dangerous without Absolutely. the proper technical and uh, scientific knowledge Absolutely. about how to take and it even out. Even the FDA right. and the EPA and the ADA all recognize that, and they'll, they'll tell you in the literature, 
gosh, be careful, don't take out your amalgam fillings because it could actually cause more harm for your health having them taken out than if you just left them in place. Well, that's true if you don't follow a protocol because putting that drill to the tooth is going to increase the amount of mercury okay. vapor. L let me just talk to the audience for a while. If you have a mercury amalgam filling, start thinking about how you're going to take it out safely. And if you're going to do that, do you know of anyone in the Philippines who practices the right protocol in yes, taking it out? Yes, we have members that follow a protocol. We certainly do. It, uh -huh. I, want, I want to make a strong comment. It's just not about the person's health that's sitting in the chair. It's that every dentist that's not following the protocol is polluting your environment. And that translates into your water being tainted with, right. with mercury and that translates into your fish getting mercury and right. there being a fish advisory it should be about the environment it's, so, it's toxic so so can you can you imagine what 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 she's saying here dr ewing she's saying is what happens in the dentist's office actually affects the environment in our towns in our cities and eventually our country and eventually the world yes not only that, but it's the amount of mercury that's getting put into the environment all year long. It takes one and a half grams of mercury to destroy, to poison, to t make a lake, 10,000 acre lake toxic. One, one and a half grams? One and a half grams. You, to the, put it in perspective, okay. 685, 485 grams is one pound. Mm -hmm. Takes one and a half grams. And you earlier said, why is it being allowed? Because a professional organization has the last two patents owned for mercury fillings. It's highly political and it's highly dangerous because what happens uh -huh. if people find out that this has poisoned them and caused them harm? In the United States, that leads to lawsuits. But, you know, okay. in the United States, we are trying to make strides. We have states that are and cities that are requiring dentists put mercury separators in the offices to try to collect the mercury that's coming out of the office and try to discard it in a safer way. But the, the first point should be let's don't put any new right, mercury right. fillings in. Well, to me, right now, with this audience that we have right now, my first concern is, first, do not use, do, uh, a mercury amalgam filling should not even be an option. Okay, yeah. so what do you tell your dentist? Well, you, you tell him, my physician is no longer right. allowed to have mercury in his office. So, so Why are you still allowed to have mercury in your office? No, what do you tell your physician instead of putting a mercury amalgam filling? You what? would rather have a white filling. Yes. White composite resin fillings are very good if used properly. You have mm -hmm. to handle them. You have to be trained. Mm -hmm. It takes a little more skill, but it's much safer if handled properly and placed properly. Well, wasn't that how it used to be before the mercury amalgam fillings? They used to have this resin thing? No, it's, oh, okay. it's more recent in the oh, market right. and okay. uh, the, the products that are available today are so much superior to mm. what it was when my father, who was a dentist, uh, who by the way died of cancer mm -hmm. and I believe it was due to the amount of mercury that he used in his office when, it's, when I look back at it. But we have safe alternative uh, long-lasting, strong composite resins that can last for long, long periods of time. Mm. And, and might I, I comment that dentists themselves are mercury toxic. And so if there's a dentist listening to this program, they really should get in touch with an integrative doctor or someone who can do some heavy metal testing mm. on them so that they can start the chelation process on themselves and their staff. And their staffs, yes. You can't forget the staff because even the hygienist, my hygienist is not, is not allowed to polish a tooth that has mercury filling in it because that will raise the amount of mercury vapor to over 10,000 times the amount allowed by the EPA standards in the United States. Okay. It's the whole dental staff that's at risk. Before I forget, let me just, uh, because uh, right now my concern is there are people out there who might be a little, fee you know, might be feeling a little panicky. Like, I have mercury amalgam fillings, and uh, what Dr. Ewing and uh, Dr. Margolis is saying makes sense, and I want, I want to undo this whole thing. Now, you won't be around to do that, but I do know someone who might be around to do that, and you can ask, uh, well, the person I learned this whole thing from, 
get in touch with Dr. Nelson Gaba, okay, to consult him. Maybe you can go to call him, get in touch with him, and uh, he can give you more information about how to take it out safely. Like Dr. Nelson Gaba would have the, yes, he the equipment the and everything, right? Yes. So get in touch with Dr. Nelson Gaba, that's G-A-B-A, -A, at 0920-952-3327. Okay, that's 0920-952-3327. Now he's uh, in Metro Manila. Now if you're listening to this and you're somewhere else, you know, you're somewhere else in Luzon, Visayas, or Mindanao, maybe he can give you a referral on other doctors yes. who practice the protocol properly. Okay? So again, very important, very important. And same person, same doctor, same number could also give you advice on how to undo a root canal, of which we are going to be talking about root canals. Why root canals should not even be an option. Well, so far, one, if you, if you never got it, uh, mercury amalgam filling, don't even think of getting it until you talk to someone involved in biological dentistry. Now, if you do have it, there's still hope. You can take it out, but it has to be taken out properly or maybe the cure could be uh, worse Absolutely. than the disease. And, right. and please stress right. that. It's, right. it's imperative. We don't want people to have further harm because it's taken out improperly. Okay, so we're going to be talking about root canal. So if you have a root canal, it can be undone. If you're scheduled for a root canal, hold your horses mm -hmm. until, you until you hear uh, what Dr. Margolis has to say. We've been talking about this, this is the third time we'll talk about this, and then after this, you, uh, it's about time you've made, you made a decision. We're going to go on a short break. I'm Jerry Cornell with Dr. Michael Margolis and uh, Dr. Don Ewing. We're talking about biological dentistry, the tooth-body connection, and we'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Open House with Jerry Cornejo, where we feature people, places, and things that are in the news or should be in the news. Now, this is uh, like a third of a series, but this is a standalone uh, program where we talk about biological dentistry and tooth-body connection. And uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Don Ewing, who practices in Texas, mm -hmm. and uh, Dr. Michael Margolis, who practices in Arizona. The, they've been here for uh, several days now, and uh, they were one of the guests, uh, well, they were guest speakers at the Philippine Dental Association annual conference held at the SMX, and of course their topic was biological dentistry. Now, uh, two things, again, uh, I would like to say this uh, from the very start, two things that uh, would be very controversial here with your own dentist, chances are, would be very controversial would be one, never get a mercury amalgam filling. Dr. Uh, Ewing just uh, talked about that. Now we're going to talk about a very common thing, and this is called the root canal, the root canal procedure. You should not get it. It should not be an option. So if you're thinking about getting it, listen to Dr. Michael Margolis first. And if you already have it, don't panic. It can be undone, but it should be undone by the right doctor. So Dr. Margolis, why not root canal? Well, in my personal opinion and experience, they are dangerous to the patient's health. I had one and was involved in a car accident, which caused my throat to increase 17 and a half inches to 24 inches in five days. If I ate anything, I had gas that was absolutely terrible. Within two months, I had kidney stones, and then I was misdiagnosed with thyroid cancer. My thyroid was taken out. It turned out to be totally healthy. There was nothing wrong with my, my thyroid. And then I became a diabetic. And then after that, I went to a convention at the American, Dental, uh, American Academy of Biological Dentistry and Medicine, and I learned something about a tooth chart and the connection. Then I went back to my practice and I started seeing women who had root canals in their upper molars and lower premolars happen to have cancer in the breast on that side of their body. And I started connecting the dots and seeing that the area in the front of the mouth, the urogenital line that Dr. Don Ewing just explained to us of having prostate cancer, uh, uterine cancer, the uh, lower back teeth, would have lung cancer or in intestinal cancers. 
And then I started seeing the connection between third molars and a lack of energy. But I started seeing the connection between the teeth and then I started wondering because I was doing 10 to 15 root canals a month in my practice. Mm -hmm. I had a business consultant. I told him I wasn't ever going to do another root canal again. And he almost had a heart attack. And I said, I can't harm my patients this way. He says, what are you talking about harm? And we found out it wasn't, it wasn't that we were harming the patient by not doing the root canal. What we did was we took the tooth out and cleaned it up. And then there are different options of restoring. Because if you take the tooth out, the toxins are still in the socket or the bone area. The bone's usually very soft. Or there's an abscess already attached to the tooth that doesn't always show up in the x-ray. So we go in there and we clean it out through a protocol that's been developed over the years by biological dentists. And then what we can do is we can build up the socket through bone grafting. What we do with our patients is we take the, well, their blood out and spin it and take the plasma and place it up in the suction, into the socket area, suture it up, and it will grow bone. In the future, you can put a removable partial. You can do a bridge in the area. And or we go ahead and we recommend a zirconium oxide implant, not titanium, because titanium is a metal and it's put in the bone and it causes a short circuit in that meridian again. Zirconium oxide doesn't do that but you have to be tested to make sure that you are compatible with the materials used. So that can be done through uh, different means. I do a blood antigen test, a Clifford test out of Colorado. Dr. Ewing uses a uh, electrical test along the meridians to see if it is compatible with the body. Sir, if you're in the Philippines, then what do you do? I mean, uh, this sounds uh, very uh, high tech. Uh, uh, these this alternatives that you're talking about. Now, in the Philippines, I mean, aside from uh, Dr. Nelson Gamba, who is bio, into biological dentistry, what do you tell your dentist? No root canal? I mean, wh what is the simplest thing? No root canal, just take out my tooth and uh, can I, can extraction? Yes, go right ahead, yes. please. We, before we went to speak at the PDA, we spent two days at De La Salle University yes. to speak with physicians to have a better understanding about what a root canal is. I, I think that it's an individual's, uh, everybody's body works differently. Mm -hmm. It can compromise an immune system. And so us being there gave us an opportunity to teach physicians because a physician doesn't really understand what a root canal is. Mm -hmm. No place in medicine do they taxidermy an organ and leave it in your body. Mm -hmm. And so it may alter someone's blood work. And so it's important that a physician is able to go, wow, your blood work didn't look like this before. Now you look sick. I don't know what's going on. Oh, you had a root canal. Oh, maybe you need to have this root canal removed. So we are working on trying to get two physicians to understand what hazards are involved with the root canal. And uh, when you do this, what do the doctors say? I mean, do they... Uh both, I, I suppose both here in the United States, they have similar reactions, or do they? Are they, uh, do they, th do the doctors here think uh, you make sense, you make a lot of sense, or, or do more doctors in the States think that way? I don't know how that is for you, but I, I know yeah. when I refer a patient to a dentist to have a, a tooth removed, I used to get a lot more static than I do, but now that implants have become more popular, a dentist is more willing to remove a tooth and place an implant because it, f there's financial gain for them. Whereas mm -hmm. before, they would get rather upset if I asked them to remove a tooth because in their mind, they are removing <coughs> a perfectly healthy root canal, which that's an oxymoron. Right, you, right, You right. can't have a perfectly healthy dead right, anything. Right, right. Now, uh, we have an alternative to uh, mercury amalgam fillings. You, which you mentioned earlier. What is the alternative to a root canal? If your doctor tells you right now, you need a root canal, and uh, it, you know the, the person is a lay person and can't get too much details, but believes what they've been hearing from you, what is the alternative? Extract the tooth? 
Well, first, you want to check that tooth and see, does it really need a root canal? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Because, okay. please, okay. in the last month, I had five patients come in for a second opinion. Okay. And what I did was I tested the tooth, mm -hmm. and it was totally normal. So their okay. bite was off. So we had to adjust their bite to make it so their teeth came together. Okay. We gave them an appliance to wear at night so when they're grinding right. their teeth, they weren't just hitting that one tooth. If you sprain an ankle, things swell up. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they sprained part of their jaw, their tooth, and the tooth rose up and so it was getting hit. So we were able to just adjust the tooth, put an appliance in, and sometimes I'll add ozone which is supercharged oxygen to the area, mm. and it takes the inflammation away, and the tooth is fine. So five out of five people that were told that they needed a root canal didn't need a root canal. Okay, let's presume they need the root okay, canal. Okay, now, if they need a root canal, mm. I'm going to recommend that the tooth be extracted. Okay. After they're healed, okay. then they have the option of making a removable partial that okay. comes in. It's very simple to make. There okay. are many different. Mm. I just make sure that it's not made out of metal. Okay. I don't want to put metal in the mouth. That's simple. Some people can afford to do a bridge right. where you have to either cut down the two teeth next to it and put crowns on, right. or there's something called a wing bridge, a Maryland bridge, mm -hmm. that you can attach to the teeth through composite resins or white fillings and then not have to cut down the teeth okay. so much. So to keep this simple, mm -hmm. if there's a... if you certainly must have a root canal. That's a 100% thing. You have to get it. Don't. Have the tooth extracted. Properly. Properly, of course. And uh, then you have options of what to do with it later. Right. Either to put a porcelain tooth, maybe. Well, uh, the porcelain clean? tooth yeah. would be the bridge. Because okay. if you just put it in the hole, right. then there's nothing there. Uh, okay, I okay. happen to wear an appliance at night, okay. so my teeth don't shift because I give my story to my patients. Okay. Because I do a lot of surgeries, and I want them to know that I understand what it is to go through. Okay. I've had the surgeries done many times. All right. So, so, so uh, again, just those two things. Can you imagine if those two things do not get a mercury amalgam filling, if we can just drill it into the people listening right now, drill and second, in. no root canal. Can you imagine thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives that you could be saving you know and with the multiplier effect millions so just those two things just those two things i mean there are so many other things but just those two things which is very common practice you know that's what i fear most is that you go to any dentist now the best dentist in the you know the the best known filipino dentist you're going to get and they say root canal and that is what you do no no to root canal, no to uh, mercury amalgam uh, fillings. Jared, yes, can I make Dr. A comment? Yes, please. One last thing in ending yes. is that there's nothing like prevention. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got children, teach them to brush and floss properly. That, that's where it all starts. There is nothing as good as what God gave you. All these materials that man makes to try to fill a hole or a void, we really need to focus on the kids and their teeth. And it, it all starts there so that we don't have to put amalgams in. We don't have mm. to put a known toxin in. Yes. And then we don't have to worry about taking it out and polluting your environment. So one of the things that you said was uh, be careful with your diet. I mean, I remember there was this uh, tribe uh, yes. that uh, had perfectly good teeth. They didn't brush their teeth. They didn't floss. It was just that they weren't exposed to refined sugar. sugar. when they were. Uh, with sugar, candies. No. Pop, sugar, candies. Right. As a grandfather, yes. we don't even have that in my, my home uh -huh. where we ha are raising our grandchild. Are you popular with your grandchildren? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, because they really don't have a sweet tooth. Uh, okay, but wonderful, wonderful. It is diet. Okay. Enter sugar into the diet, and it messes up everything from the way you develop okay. to the inner workings of a tooth to the rest of the way that your metabolism works in the body. You get sick from sugar. Okay, Yana, so three things you learn now that you can improve your, your life right now, immediately, and those of your loved ones. And uh, so no mercury amalgam fillings, no root canal, no refined sugar. Right. All right. Russian Processed pop. foods. Processed food. 30 seconds, please. please. The people of the Philippines watch, listening to you. 
you can make a difference for your own country. You know, when the people are asking for biological dentists, it's not dentistry that's going to change themselves. It's going to be driven by the public. Get educated. It's your body. Don't let somebody put something that's toxic in your body. And in your environment. The islands are fantastic. The people that we have met here, my heart goes to them because they are so wonderful, so welcoming. I, it was beyond my dream coming here to see and be greeted so openly and to see the beauty of your nation. Don't let it be destroyed and put mercury into your systems, into your agriculture. Protect what you have and keep the tourists coming. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Michael Margolis. Thank you very much, Thank Dr. You. Don Ewing. Thank you very much, Dr. Nelson Gamba. Thank you very much to Dr. Edna Lao and Dr. Ramel Tino for uh, opening our eyes to uh, biological dentistry and the tooth-body connection. Until next program then, I'm Jerry Cornejo. Take care. I love you. God bless you. <laughs>